Hey, I'm Susan Palmer, Lead Cat Press. Welcome to my studio update. Thanks so much for tuning in. As usual, I have a full seven course meal for you this time. You can use the description box to hop down to whatever area you need some attention and uh, kind of get to that get to that work. I want to thank everybody for subscribing to my channel, checking out my videos, attending my free classes that I've offered every single month this year in 2023. Um, I'm really proud of all the work that we've been able to do together. Um, I also taught the four week group classes and uh, private lessons. So if any of that interests you, then, uh, then do reach out. I mentioned in my last newsletter that I'm putting the free classes on hold for a little while. Um, I've got just a lot of stuff that I'm working on and I got some new projects that I wanna get working on as, uh, as we get into 2024. I will bring the free classes back as soon as this YouTube channel <laughs> that I'm speaking to you from, uh, as soon as it monetizes. Um, I've been putting out a lot of videos. I think there's over a thousand up here. Uh, everything from jam tracks to these lessons and chord melody songs, I have free PDFs. I feel like I've done a lot for you and uh, I'm very proud of all of that work. It's uh, helped me gain some new students and make some new relationships with people and that's a really wonderful thing to do. But I also need to pay my bills and I want to incentivize you guys to check out my videos. So every video that you watch and you practice along with and all that, that's going to help fund my scholarship program as well as those free classes. So um, I hope you do enjoy this video and uh, thanks again for helping make 2023 pretty freaking amazing. I've got another enclosure exercise for you this week. And I'm gonna start by enclosing the note C. I do that by playing a diatonic above C, which is the note D, half step below C, which is B, and then the note C. And I'm gonna finish that with the triad, so C, E, G. So I get D, B, C, E, G. Now descending, it follows a different form. Um, let's say my target note is G. So I'm gonna start with a half step below, which is F sharp, go a diatonic above, which is A, and then, s and then I'll play the target note, which is G, and then finish with the triad E and C. So I'm gonna play that up the neck in all five positions in the key of C.
my reading tip for you this week is pretty simple. I want you to tap your toe when you're doing your reading exercises. And the reason I want you to do that is so that you can sync up your pick direction in your foot as well as your hand, and that will help you stay on track. Now, I don't really want you to tap your whole foot because if you get into that habit, that can be distracting for the audience and it can also create some unwanted sounds when you're recording. The best thing to do is to just tap your toe and you can do that inside your shoe if you're wearing shoes or just your socks or barefoot if you'd like, but try to do it in a way that doesn't make any sound but is still syncing you up with your right hand or your left hand, depending on if you play right-handed guitar or left-handed guitar. It's pretty normal to have some confusion between the D string root minor seven chord and the G string root minor seven chord. So I wanna share with you just an exercise that you can practice up the neck to work on your coordination for both of those chords and also your mind, because it's important to know what it is that you're playing. I wanna start with an E flat minor seven chord and I'm using a D string root for that. And then I'm gonna kind of flip that so that it becomes a G string root chord in that same area. And this would be A minor. And so this is an exercise that you can take up the neck, just kind of flipping those around. I do think it's a really important and helpful to call out the names of the chords as you're playing them, just so you really ingrain where each one of those root notes is located so that when your teacher, I don't know, says, play me a D string root chord, you'll know where that is. Um, now I have seen some students who have a really hard time fretting this D string root with their two fingers, their second and third. Just wanna throw out this alternative. Um, some players I know will just use their second finger and kind of flatten that across the top two strings. Um, for me, that is not super comfortable, but it does allow some other uh, cool things that you might wanna use in chord melody or chord solos. So I encourage you to play with some different fingerings, try some different things, find one way you can play it that'll kind of get you by for right now. And then, you know, don't be afraid to try something different if that way, if one way isn't working for you or if you wanna investigate some other options. I wanna talk a little bit about guide tones. So I think of guide tones as being chord tones that travel well from one chord to the next. And if you analyze some melodies to jazz standards, you're gonna see that there are a lot of chord tones and some of those chord tones really flow nicely to each other as the song progresses. There's other filler notes in there, of course, but the guide tones really are the skeleton of a good composition. And you can think of guide tones, you know, like I said, as being chord tones. Most of the time they're the threes and the sevens of each chord, but they can also involve the fifth or the root. Um, they're the notes that really wanna gravitate using half steps or maybe whole steps from one chord to the next. We're usually looking for those really smooth transition points between the chords. And they provide the skeleton of a melody. And I think that can be really helpful if you're learning how to improvise. So if I'm playing over a B flat blues um, and I use guide tones, you can kind of hear the harmony, but you can also hear like a little shape of a melody starting to come out as well. So I played mostly chord tones in there and I uh, kind of let the melody try to guide me a little bit just by what I was hearing. But I tried to stick to just those kind of smooth transition points between the chords. So an assignment that I've had a lot of my students work on lately is to write out a guide tone solo that sounds good all on its own, just using half notes to start. And then we kind of add some different ideas from there. So if you feel so inclined to try that assignment, give it a try. When you're soloing over a chord, it makes sense to play a lot of the chord tones that are in that chord that's being played. So if the C chord is what the band is playing, then it makes sense to build some lines using the notes C, E, and G. But I want to share with you something different. You can also think of playing an E minor triad over the C major 
chord. When you do that, you're going to be highlighting a G, a B, and an E. So E is in the chord of C, B is our major seventh in the key of C, and G is the fifth. So it's not that there's a lot of different notes in that, but you have an association, if you studied chord tones, you have an association of what it feels mm -hmm. like to play E minor. Now all those notes you know, work over the C major chord, but your experience playing them is going to be a little bit different, and so it's going to sound different. You're going to play those notes in an E minor triad, E, G, B. You're going to play those in a different way that if you were thinking of E minor than if you were thinking of C major. So I want you to experiment with that. And then I also want you to try the notes A, C, and E. Those make up the A minor triad. I think a big question that a lot of jazz players get is how do I memorize tunes or how do I keep those tunes kind of in my in my memory bank and under my fingers. And earlier, well, I think it was last week actually, I posted a video that uh, where I share my process for it and I just played everything <laughs> that I play when I'm trying to, you know, just quickly remember a tune. I started off by playing the melody in two different places. Then I played uh, I played the octaves of the melody. I played a chord melody, just a real simple chord melody arrangement to it. I played just the threes and the sevens of the chords. Uh, I played a walking bass line that had some chord punches in there. And then I took just a, a quick solo through it. And I had my metronome going the whole time, 80 beats per minute, was hearing that on the two and the four. And uh, the tune was Here's That Rainy Day. So I'll put the little link up there so you can follow that if you want to check that video out. This week's pro tip is about mistakes. And I love making mistakes because when I'm playing and I make a mistake, I know exactly where I need to focus. And to me, that is a beautiful thing because otherwise I'm just kind of playing around. You know, I have some idea of what I want to do, but I don't, you know, it doesn't really show up until I make a mistake. And then it's like, aha, that's where I need to focus. So I want you to be thankful for your mistakes when you make them and pay attention when you make those mistakes because they are telling you exactly where you need to focus.